Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, September 22nd. Okay, so welcome to a major pivot day. We have a lot going on here today. Let's break it down. First of all, the moon in Taurus energy is going to go void, of course, at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking in a Gemini energy at 6.25 a.m. So again, a very short window of opportunity for us to kind of lose our shit. Things get shaky, things get kind of unstable, uncertain while the moon is void. And of course, we're transiting out of an earth energy, Taurus, to an air energy, Gemini. And of course, the minute that we move into that Gemini energy, our curiosity is peaked. We're coming out of our introverted shell. We're kind of curious about the world around us. We're more chatty Cathy's, if you will, wanting to interact and to collaborate and bounce ideas off of the people around us. So there's definitely going to be a major shift. We're coming out of being kind of aware of our physical form, aware of our physical circumstances. Again, that earth energy has this very present anchored into the here and now. The Gemini energy wants to expand. We want to build on ideas. We want to expand on our social circles. We want to push the boundaries of some of the options and opportunities that we've been contemplating, but a little bit of research needs to be done. We need more information and details. And again, that Gemini energy being an air sign, we're definitely in a good position to kind of poke the bear, if you will, to see what it is that we can actually explore, or actually discover. I think it's a very interesting dynamic, though. I'm going to go on a little bit of a mini rant here. If you haven't listened to the Ascension forecast for this week, I'm going to recommend that you do so. We have a beautiful interaction between the sun and Pluto taking place while the moon is still in Taurus energy, grounding it in, anchoring it in. We'll talk about that when we get to it. But I think it's very interesting that the moon shifts into Gemini energy the minute, well, let's call it two hours before the sun moves into Libra energy, which of course is kicking off the equinox. Major pivot point here today. We're changing paths, we're changing directions, we're changing moods and attitude, we're changing seasons. That equinox energy, definitely a little bit different this year just because we are in the middle of eclipse season. But the moon being in an air energy, just as the sun is about to move into an air energy, things are definitely going to feel a lot brighter, a lot, I'm not going to say more positive. There are going to be positive blips. However, we're getting out of the physical form. We're coming up into the headspace. We are trying to go out into the world. We're trying to be a little bit more social. And it's very interesting dynamic because, of course, air on air means that we're going to receive some insight, some clarity, which we've all been waiting for. Of course, the major event is the sun moving into Libra energy. Again, take a listen to the Astro Forecast about that. Download your Libra Season e-guide to stay ahead of the game. We also have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, in her rulership now over Libra Season, leaving her rulership in Libra energy for Scorpio energy. But before she does that, there is going to be a little bit of conflict, a little bit of tension kind of stirred up while still in the Libra energy with Mr. Pluto, Mr. Saturn. We'll talk about that when we get there. And then Venus is going to wrap up the day by moving into Scorpio energy. Again, there's an astro forecast for that. Download your e-guide. Listen to your September Zodiac forecast to stay ahead of the game. So there's definitely a lot going on. With that being said, 14 different aspects taking place here today. So a very busy day in the cosmos. Nine of those aspects are going to involve the moon. The moon, while still in this Taurus energy, going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who, of course, is retrograde in Pisces energy. We love Pisces and Taurus energy working together because whatever it is that we can dream, whatever it is that we can imagine, we can bring it to life through the physical form because of that Taurus energy. We are, with Mr. Saturn, getting a little bit more serious, a little bit more somber with what needs to be done, with what needs to be removed, what needs to be tied up, what needs to have the door kind of slammed shut, if you will, in order for us to start building towards something new. We do have a new vision, new goal, new dream in mind. We haven't been able to kind of initiate those cornerstone foundational pieces to actually build towards that goal, vision, and dream. Because again, we're in a completion cycle. We need to be wrapping things up, but we're anchored in this new vision. We're anchored in where it is that we want to end up. And that is giving us a little bit more structure, a little bit more clarity than we've had for a very long time. 
the moon is going to come up to bump into team up with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in this Taurus energy. This is a conjunction, which means that something is ending and something is beginning. I think what is ending is our resistance or hesitation to even acknowledge where ne change needs to take place in our physical realm, where routines, relationships, money matters, long-term goals, visions, and dreams are concerned. And what is beginning is a new realization on where it is that we have to be a little bit more spontaneous, a little bit more willing to take a calculated risk in order for us to pivot away from what it is that we've already built, already created, that we're no longer in alignment with, and actually start realizing where it is that we have to start building a foundation, a structure, if you will, towards this new goal, this new vision, this new dream. So then we have the sun. Here's where I was kind of talking about the sun and Pluto. Um, this is going to be a beautiful energy for us. The sun shining a very bright light in the final degrees of this Virgo energy. So again, we're at the final degrees of any sign. There's always an intensity there. We are trining beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who was retrograde in Capricorn energy. Now, we love Virgo energy and Pluto working together because Pluto does a deep dive in our psyche. He shows us where it is that we're unearthing, if you will, programming, conditioning that, of course, is limiting, holding us back. The Virgo energy has us kind of addressing the lower level of our intellect, the mental plane, if you will. So whatever it is that we're kind of able to realize is deeply seated in our programming, in our conditioning from how it is that we were raised, from how it is that we've been operating rating, the Virgo energy is able to improve it. We're able to flip the script, if you will. We're able to actually do something about the realizations in which we're having. The trine, of course, means that we're dealing with earth on earth action, which means we're very, very aware of our present moment, the issues at hand, where it is that we are being challenged to make some changes, to make some transformations. Here's the thing. This is going to be an empowerment energy. We are kind of moving into a very, very pivotal time where we are bossing up. OK, so there's going to be growth within ourselves, growth in our awareness, growth in our emotions, growth in our ability to see where it is that we need to do things differently. We are kind of bossing up with a new belief system as well. And we're starting to realize that it doesn't matter what kind of cards we've been dealt. We are going to use that crappy hand to the best of our ability to our advantage. So this is definitely kind of building in this self-confidence, self-esteem in this major pivot point where we start feeling a little bit more in power and control than we have in the past. The moon in Taurus, then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. So again, we love Taurus and Pisces energy working together. A sextile is a gentle nudge in the right direction. And Neptune, of course, retrograde in this Pisces energy is having us take a good look at where it is that, yeah, you know, old version of self had different wants, needs and desires, different dreams, different goals, different visions. We're recognizing where it is that we're no longer resonating with that, where we're no longer attached to wanting to bring some of those aspects to life. And of course, we are again, cutting the cord, we're wrapping up the loose ends, we're closing the door on that particular chapter. And we are starting to get kind of refreshed and renewed in our soul and our spirit to understand what it is that we're being called to do called to pursue. Our intuition is coming in strong, our vision is coming in strong. And again, whatever, whatever we're able to kind of grasp in imaginary land, we're actually able to root it into the physical body, anchor it in, if you will, so that we can actively start taking action upon it here in the physical form to start building towards it. So emotionally speaking, we are definitely feeling refreshed and renewed in our soul and our spirit. And we are starting to realize that we can actually achieve the goal, the visions, the dreams that we are currently trying to percolate and piece together. The moon is going to make a harsh interaction with Venus, though. Venus in her rulership in these final degrees of Libra energy, there's an intensity that comes with that. Venus also rules over the Taurus energy. So we're interacting with the ruler that the moon is currently in, you know, the Taurus energy. Venus rules over that. 
Venus rules over Taurus energy and Libra energy. And let me just say that this is a harsh interaction, which means that emotionally speaking, we're not feeling so good. We're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so certain. There is a lot of fears, a lot of doubts, a lot of insecurities that need to be triggered, need to be activated before we move into Libra season, before we watch Venus actually move into Scorpio energy. Why? Well, because the Scorpio energy is going to help us do the deep seated work in our shadow selves that needs to happen in order for us to flip the script on our fears doubts and insecurities and actually put us in a situation to do something about it. Scorpio energy is where change and transformation takes place. But of course, we have to be aware of where it is that we're resisting those particular changes where we're not happy, where we're not content, where we want more out of the world around us, out of the relationships that we're pouring in, out of our goals or visions or dreams that we've been trying to build and create in our heart space and in our head space. So this particular interaction going to flip the scales into the darkest part of our fears, our doubts, our insecurities, especially where our happiness, our joy, our long term goals and visions are concerned. The moon in Taurus then going to trine, beautiful interaction, with Pluto, who was retrograde in Capricorn energy. So again, Earth on Earth. And what we're doing here is we're realizing those fears, doubts, and insecurities. We're realizing where it is that we're not happy, where we're not content with life. We're realizing that we have some challenges, some obstacles that we're currently facing. But again, there's an empowerment energy. We're starting to rise to the challenge. We're starting to realize that it doesn't matter what kind of crappy hands are dealt with us or dealt to us from life, we're going to play those cards in our favor. And so again, we're kind of building our self worth up our self confidence up our self esteem up, we are ready to take power and take control over our physical lives. But again, side note, we're still in eclipse season. So we don't have as much power and control as we would like to think we have. The last thing that we have going on with this moon and Taurus energy is there is going to be a beautiful trine with the sun because of course, the sun and Pluto just trined. We just trying Pluto. So now it makes sense that we're trining the sun. So we have the moon in the final degrees of Taurus energy. We have the sun in the final degrees of Virgo energy. This is earth on earth action. And of course, anytime that the moon and the sun come together, there's going to be an aha moment of what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire, what we have to do to get it. And from that improvements, adjustments, actions can be made. So because this is earth energy, because their Virgo energy is focusing in on where we can make some adjustments, where we can do better, where we can be better, where we can make some improvements. Emotionally speaking, we are very anchored into what could we do to create more happiness, more joy, more safety, more security in our lives. And again, leaning all into the creature comforts. This is the point in time where the moon is going to go void, of course. Again, we're only standing in it for a couple of moments. We shift into that Gemini energy. And then at 844 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the sun moves into Libra energy. So again, listen to the September Zodiac forecast to understand where the Libra energy is going to be impacting you the most. Listen to your sun, your moon, your rising. Download the Libra season e-guide. That is your energetic Bible to stay ahead of the game here in Libra season. And of course, there's an astral forecast for this particular event that I'm going to encourage you to take a listen to as well on top of the Ascension forecast for this week, just to understand where the energy shifts are taking place and the physical manifestation of Ascension symptoms that will likely follow. So that's 844 a.m. OK, there's nothing going on. Absolutely zero going on until 403 p.m huge amount of time that we are sitting in this equinox energy. It's a rebalancing of the karmic scale, so to speak. There is a lot of air energy. So we're being lifted out of our physical forms. We are seeing the forest past the trees at this particular point. We have a lot of buzzing, a lot of different ideas coming at us. 4.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Gemini energy is going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Libra energy, of course, at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree. So we are starting to see our options 
to create a better life, a more stable life, a more familiar, comfortable, traditional life, a better balance, better happiness, better joy, better compromise, better negotiation amongst our relationship dynamics. We are getting to the heart, to the soul of the matter. Again, we talked about the heart activations popping off in the Ascension forecast for this week. Emotionally speaking, we are trying to dig ourselves out of what was a little bit of a dark pit earlier in the day when, of course, the moon and Taurus asked Venus in not the nicest way. And then again, we get illuminated to our fears, our doubts, our insecurities. Of course, at this particular juncture, Venus is in her rulership now over Libra season, very short amount of time that she will continue to be in Libra energy. But emotionally speaking, we're starting to be a little bit more positive, a little bit more hopeful, a little bit more logical and practical on where it is that we can balance the scales of our emotions, especially between our heart and our head to figure out what it is that we could do differently, what it is that we could tweak in our physical realms in order to create a space, again, where there's more stability, more happiness, more joy. Venus goes into the boxing ring and fights it out with Pluto, the great transformer. So again, Venus is at the final degrees of this Libra energy, of her rulership. Pluto retrograde in the final degrees of Capricorn energy, because again, we're in this completion cycle. We're in the closing of the door cycle, if you will. This is definitely going to illuminate the fear that we have. The power struggles going on between our heart and our head. Maybe the power struggles going on in relationship dynamics. If you got certain relationship dynamics popping off, of course, we're in eclipse season. Soul contracts are being terminated, reviewed, renewed, and initiated. All kinds of different things happening here. But what I will say about this is that we have to be illuminated to where it is that there are power struggles, where it is that we're not so happy, peachy keen, where it is that we have been resisting making the changes that we know that we need to make. We have to be aware of where it is that we're afraid of being real and raw and vulnerable, where it is that we are afraid of losing something. Many of us are biting our tongues, not being honest in relationship dynamics because we're afraid to rock the boat and actually have that person walk away from us, even though essentially that's what deep seatedly we want. OK, but we're afraid to be the bad guy. We're afraid to be that person. And so at this particular juncture, we're watching Venus and Pluto highlight for us where it is that there's growing pains and those growing pains we are going to have fully in our face before Venus actually does a deep dive in the Scorpio energy. So. It's almost like we're stubbornly trying to hold on to what it is that we've built, what it is that we've already created, what it is that we already got going on, even though we've already identified that we no longer want it. We no longer resonate with it. Our wants, our needs, our desires have changed, but yet we're afraid to say anything because that means that we give the other people in our lives the power to walk away from us. And we don't want to be walked away from, but we also don't want to be the one walking away from other people. And so our personal plans, our goals, our ambitions, for ourselves independently are clashing with the wants, needs, and desires of the team, of the relationship dynamic, whatever the case may be. We're at odds with ourselves and likely with other people. This is going to bring up some fears, some doubts, some insecurities, some suspicions, some jealousies. All of those darker parts are going to rise to the surface for good reason. We'll talk about that in just a second because this energy does continue. But first, we have the moon in Gemini energy, sextiling, beautiful interaction with the north node in Aries energy. And of course, this is a sextile, which means there's a gentle nudge in the right direction. Emotionally speaking, in Gemini energy, we're wrecking our brains. We're trying to come up with ideas. We're coming up with solutions on how we can move forward, how we can grow, how we can heal, how we can do better, how we can evolve, how we can actually put one foot in front of the other and actually pivot into a new path, into a new direction. But the minute that we're feeling good about it, the minute that we're feeling positive about it, the moon is going to semi-square Chiron, the wounded healer. So suddenly we're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so in power or in control. Now we're coming up with excuses on why it is that we shouldn't want to make the changes. We shouldn't want want to grow. We shouldn't want to heal. We should just learn to settle with what it is that we currently have. Why? Because that's easier. 
the old version of self is overwhelmed with everything that is on the to-do list in order for the new version of self to be anchored in. And of course, we are much more aligned with our higher selves. We are much more connected to our intuition. We have a deeper calling. We have the deeper mission. We have a deeper truth. And so all of the fears, the doubts, the insecurities are coming up within us because again, we have to acknowledge them, especially as we're about to do a deep dive in how to change them, how to transform them. But first, Venus going to make a harsh interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is going to definitely show us where it is that we are at war with ourselves, probably between our heart and our head, where we're at war with the old version of self versus the new version of self, where we're at war in our relationship dynamics, where we're at war realizing that in order for us to grow, in order for us to evolve, in order for us to move on, we have to make a major change. And when we make a major change, we are likely going to lose people in the process. It feels like we are so afraid of having people walk out of our lives that we're willing to choke on the words that we've been desperately wanting to say in order to actually keep the peace. Again, Venus in this Libra energy, we tend to dim our own light, put our own wants, needs, and desires on the back burner in order to smooth things over, in order to not rock the boat, in order to put other people's wants, needs, and desires ahead of our own damn selves. So we're going to be in the thick of it, okay? We're going to be in the darkness. We're going to not feel so hot, not feel so good reason being 10 36 p.m the last aspect that we have popping off here today is venus the goddess of love beauty worth pleasure and money moving out of her rulership in libra energy she's doing a deep dive in scorpio energy so again bust out that e-guide listen to that astro forecast listen to the zodiac forecast so that you understand where the scorpio energy is going to be impacting you the most But when I say that we're about to do a deep dive in our heart space, when we're about to do a deep dive on what needs to end, what needs to die in order for something new to actually grow, you best believe we are about to go through a major change, a major transformation of our worth, of our values, of who and what needs to stay and needs to go.